Hello and welcome everybody to know all about nano science and technology. So in today's video we'll be learning about one of the techniques involved in characterizing nanomaterials that is about scanning electron microscope which is also known as SEM or SEM. SEM is one of the most widely used techniques used in characterization of nanomaterials and nanostructures. Actually, it is a technique that produces images of a sample by scanning it with a beam of electrons. These electrons then interact with the different atoms present at the sample surface and produce various signals that reveal information on the, surf on the, uh, on the sample surface morphology and composition. So basically, this is how SEM characterizes various nanomaterials. So now let's dive in further in the video to know more about its basic principle, instrumentation and applications. Firstly, you need to know that the scanning electron microscope is an electron microscope that images the sample surface by scanning it with a high energy beam of electrons. So now you may ask what's the difference between the light microscope and this electron microscope. Then let me tell you that the conventional light microscopes use a series of glass lenses to bend light waves and create a magnified image. While the scanning electron microscope creates the magnified images by using electrons instead of light waves. And you must also know the reasons why SEM is considered better and preferred over light microscope for characterizing nanomaterials. So these reasons include resolution at high magnification, depth of field and microanalysis. Now let's understand a bit more details about each of them. Firstly, talking about resolution at high magnification. Then what does this resolution mean? So resolution can be defined as the least distance between two closely opposed points at which they may be recognized as two separate entities. So in case of light microscope, the best resolution is about 200 nanometer, whereas a SEM has resolution of about 5 nanometer. Then talking about depth of field. Now what is this depth of field? It is the height of specimen that appears in focus of an image. Actually SEM has more than 300 times the depth of field compared to the light microscope. This means that great topographical detail can be obtained using SEM. Also the 3D appearance of specimen image is most valuable feature of the SEM. This is because even at low magnifications, such 3D images can give much more information about our sample, which is otherwise not possible with the light microscope. Now, the last reason that proves SEM better is microanalysis. It is the analysis of a sample composition that includes information about the chemical composition. In addition, crystallographic, magnetic and electrical characteristics are also possible with modern instrumentation, whereas light microscope cannot provide such information about the sample. So with this, now I think it must be clear to you that why SEM is considered superior and preferred over light microscope when it comes to characterizing the nanomaterials. Okay then, now let's get into knowing about working principle and instrumentation of SEM. Firstly, let's understand its basic principle. So when the beam of electrons strike the surface of the solid sample, and interacts with the atoms of the sample, signals in the form of secondary electrons, backscattered electrons and characteristic x-rays are generated that contain information about the sample's topography and composition. So as you can see in this picture, when the electron beam hits the sample surface, there is interaction between them which leads to the generation of secondary electrons, backscattered electrons and x-rays. The interactions of a solid with an electron beam can be divided into two categories that is elastic and inelastic interactions. 
Now, what are these elastic and non-elastic interactions? So, elastic interactions are those that affect the trajectories or path of electrons in the beam without changing their energy significantly. While inelastic interactions are those that transfer the energy of electrons to the solid. So, after transferring the energy of electrons to solid, the solid sample gets excited and then the excited solid then emits secondary electrons, auger electrons, x-rays and sometimes longer wavelength photons and the SEM images are produced by collecting the emitted electrons on a cathode ray tube that is CRT. Actually, there are various SEM techniques that are differentiated on the basis of what is subsequently detected and image, uh, imaged. The principal images produced in the SEM are of three types that is secondary electron images, backscattered electron images and element, elemental x-ray maps. Okay. Now, high energy primary electron interacting with an atom results in either elastic scattering with the atomic nucleus or in elastic scattering with the atomic electrons. So, as we have discussed earlier, in an inelastic collision, the primary electron transfers a part of its energy to the other electron. When the energy transferred is large enough, the other electron will emit from sample. If this emitted electron has energy less than 50 electron volt, it is referred to as secondary electrons. The backscattered electrons are the high energy electrons that are elastically scattered and essentially possess the same energy as the incident or primary electrons. Here, the number of secondary electrons is generally one half to one fifth or less the number of backscattered electrons. So this was all about the basic principle of SEM and now let's move towards its instrumentation part. So here is the diagram that shows essential parts of a scanning electron microscope. In a typical SEM, an electron beam is thermionically emitted from an electron gun fitted with tungsten filament cathode. So here tungsten is mostly used in guns because it has highest melting point and lowest vapor pressures of all metals allowing it to be heated for electron emission and also it is cheap. The electron beam which typically has energy ranging from 0.2 kilo electron volt to 40 kilo electron volt is focused by one or two condenser lenses to spot about 0.5 to 5 nanometer in diameter. Then the beam passes through pairs of scanning coils or pair of uh, deflector plates in the electron column typically in the final lens. The final lens then deflect the beam in the x and y axis so that it scans in a raster fashion over a rectangular area of the sample surface. When the primary electron beam interacts with the sample, the electrons lose energy by repeated random scattering and absorption within a teardrop shaped volume of the sample, known as the interaction volume which extends from less than 100 nanometer to around 5 micrometer into the surface. Here, the size of interaction volume depends on the electron's landing energy, the atomic number of sample and the sample's density. Various electronic devices are used to detect and amplify the signals and display them as an image on CRT in which the raster scanning is synchronized with that of the microscope. Therefore, the image displayed is the distribution map of the intensity of the signal being emitted from the scanned area of the sample. So with this, we are done with the instrumentation and working part of the SEM. Now let's talk about the nature and preparation of sample that is to be characterized using SEM. For SEM, the sample must be electrically conductive and grounded so that the electrostatic charge does not get accumulated at the surface of the sample. Usually, the samples are coated with conductive materials like gold, platinum, iridium, tungsten, chromium and graphite. 
The coating does not allow the static electric charges to accumulate on the sample during electron irradiation. Coating is done in order to magnimi, magnimi, uh, maximize signal and to improve spatial resolution. Now lastly, let's have a look at some of the applications of SEM. First, SEM allows and shows detailed 3D images with resolution of few nanometers and at high uh, much high uh, much higher magnification second the surface structures of polymers nano coatings nanoparticles nanofibers and uh, nanocomposites can be imaged through SEM with great clarity third SEM image is the prime characterization technique in the biomedical environmental textile tissue engineering cell culture and cell development and scaffold construction Bulk samples can be observed and larger sample area can be waived by SEM. SEM not only produces topographical information but also provides the information on chemical composition near the surface. So these were the few applications of SEM. So for reference you can see this. This is the SEM image of carbon nanotubes. So this is how carbon nanotubes appears under scanning electron microscope. However, uh, SEM images are black and white because they are created without light waves. So that's why um, SEM images appear black and white. With this we are done with our today's learning and I hope that this video will help you guys in better understanding of scanning electron microscope. And lastly I would like to tell you guys that though we are dealing with the tough times we will fight together, we will be there for each other and also will make sure that our learning won't stop. So do share this video with those who would find it helpful and also let's be responsible and follow all the precautionary measures do wear a mask and very importantly stay at home and let's make sure that at the end only humanity will win this battle so until next time stay safe be happy and keep learning